rugby lovers, it's the Rugby Rundown, and it's the last episode of Series 1 Corps. We've done it 35 episodes. We had an amazing show last week. Credit to everyone that got involved. I want to give a big shout out to Israel, our videographer, also our photographer, Jonathan, and of course our editor, Adam. Um, brilliant show, really enjoyed it last week. And then it was the championship final. Man, you were there, of course, Spectator. How are you doing? But also, how was your experience? Uh, I'm good, Will. Obviously, uh, first off, yeah, last episode of the season. What a season it's been. Uh, 35 in the bank. Hopefully the start of something special here that we're building. So thanks to everyone for listening, watching, support us on that yes. journey. Second of all, I'm doing really well. Obviously, uh, the Snapdragon, the, the final on Sunday, I thought was oh. a fantastic spectacle. Um, I never think it's easy to put on a final where rugby's at and a neutral venue in, yeah, in, yeah, in no, this league yeah. yet. But I thought, you know, 12,000 fans, yeah. um, I, I, bearing the heat, the heat was incredible. Yeah, Fair yeah, play yeah, to the yeah, players yeah, yeah. playing through that as well. It was a hot Toasty. day out there. But it was also amazing atmosphere. Marshmallow at halftime was an absolute vibe when yeah. the crowd was going oh, man, buzzing insane. for that. Yeah, what like that was, clips that was photos. Yeah, that was pretty special. And, and I just thought the event on a whole, like it had a that big game spectacle to yeah. it. The rugby was pretty gritty but competitive. And and, and and I enjoyed myself, even though I would have much rather been out on the field or I feel in the you. coaching box doing what I do. I, I feel you. I had a busy day on the weekend with broadcasting. Great to be on Fox. Yeah, on congratulations. Literally. Thank you very much, buddy. Look, just having that visibility, being on the main Fox channel was awesome. I'm sure plenty of new rugby fans maybe might come yeah, from that, that Those game. are the windows, the exposure windows that just give you that, that, that high visibility, which is really our outreach yes. to wider fans. 100%. So, yeah, all in all, a fantastic, fantastic weekend. Special mention to the San Diego Legion, Legion staff yeah. and, of course, the Major League Rugby staff who put on that whole event. Like, honestly, I saw so many people working ridiculously hard, not just from the weekend, but before yeah. that, organising it. And then a big shout out as well. I'm sure you want to say a quick one. Ryan Patterson, uh, owner of San, Di uh, San Diego Legion and also chairman uh, within Major League Rugby Board of Ownerships. Like... Credit, Ryan, thank you, because ultimately he was a big part of that whole whole day. Yeah, so start from the top down. Ryan, just honestly one of the, the bright sparks and the real sort of lightning rods of all the positive stuff going on oh, in rugby over enormous. here. Just a massive driver behind it. His vision to, to put together the final, to be involved in that All Blacks game, outstanding. And then the, the, I know personally how hard that SD Legion staff work. They've been non-stop. They had the All Blacks game to get ready. Yeah. They all, are all staff that do other normal jobs day yep. to day in the season. They Plenty really volunteers. really put it Dave, David Hay and, and, and his team really, really put their, you know, their, their, their hard blood, sweat and tears into that. And it was amazing to see them pull off such a big event and just showing like, I think Legion this year have been a flag bearer of like where it could all be and, and how it could all look. And, and I'm really proud of it. No, it was awesome. It was amazing. Not just of course the spectacle, but of course the rugby on the field because Seattle Seawolves took on the new England free jacks, but the free jacks, Went back, two back. There he is. There's yes. my poet. I got the line in, <laughs> which Corps has been telling me to do. Um, it was a very special game and a special result for the New England Free Jacks. So Corbs and I, let's sit into it. Let's review it on what was a brilliant win for the Free Jacks at Snapdragon. Yes, New England won it in the end, 20 points to 11. There were only two tries in the whole game. First one in the first half, or both, I should say, sorry, in the first half by LaRue Milan, by New England. And then, of course, Joe Tafte got a Seattle's try. Then it was the boots of Potros and Mac Mason that kept those points ticking over. I suppose, overall, before we really dissect it, Corbs, I'm going to ask you, did the better team win? Yes, I yeah. think the better team won. Um, I just thought the Free Jacks, to me, especially on the day, just looked the clear better side. Mm. I think they just had more bounce to their game. They looked more dynamic. They're winning the contact area consistently in D. Yeah. All the other things, the X Factor, the variation, going down the short side, the the handling, they, they sort of brought their complete game to there. There was probably Jacks a little bit of, of a wobble. Um, you know, at the scrum early, they start to be under a bit of pressure, but they really did a good job to, to, to hold that down. And then I just think as well, some of those mole stops at oh, the end. Oh, but the defence in the hole, Yeah, breakdown defence. 
Mall D that we talked about in the preview last week, which again yes. I thought was an awesome preview. Yes, I say so myself. <laughs> I thought it was a massive, a massive uh, win for the Free Jacks in in shutting down Seattle. And then I just felt like Seattle as well. They just looked a little flat. Like they played a lot of players, a lot of minutes this season. Maybe it was the heat. Maybe it was because they picked the slightly bigger pack, which usually plays on their smaller field at home, and maybe looked slightly less dynamic out there on the wider maybe field. Maybe that's where they might have but, suffered. But that's that's they're always going to look less dynamic to that more mobile pack of the free jack. So it, it's sometimes captain hindsight when you're looking at these things. When we think of the key moments of the game, let's stick to that first half. I talked about the first tries. Um, now, that first try from um, LaRue Milan was very special. Yep. The way how they broke around the back of the line out, little inside ball from Quattron to Toby Fricker, which, by the way, I want to mention the fact that the Free Jacks picked up those three players in May. One of them was Oscar Lennon, the nine. One of them was Toby Frick of the winger. And the other one was Jed Melvin. I want to come on to him in a moment. What unbelievable signings they were. Toby Frick nearly bust through. And LaRue Milan just manages to look up, see space in that blind side. What a finish. I thought just clutch. Like, yeah. clutch is probably the best word. Like, we talked about red zone conversion. Big moments. Yes. Who's going to come away with points? To be fair to them, this mall was further out. And what I liked about it is they didn't just like what some teams call like a straight, like almost blast or pull out where you hit. Yeah, and they actually out. stuck, they actually in, sucked them out. all. It bought in the corners more. It meant that when they did break out, when Joe bites on Quatrin, <laughs> there's not the same connective tissue on the inside. It opened up the space. They also had the variation to go outside too, if that yeah, inside yeah, space yeah, would mark. Was so, coming, yeah. so it very well done. And then just got on the front foot. And then the reaction of the short side, which we talked about. Dallas exposed some of those yes, short sides. Did. Yeah, Free yeah, Jack's yeah. DNA is always looking for two-sided attack and ripping back. And, and, and I thought, considering how strong a red zone D team Seattle usually are, I thought it was a very smart, efficient way to get on the scoreboard. Do watch the contact coach because he breaks it down very, very well on the Rugby Network. Now then, the second try of the game came from Seattle Seawolves and Joe Talfate. Really sneaky play. And I, what I loved about this is that's homework they've done there. They keep New England Free Jacks, kept Potras on that near side. He's defending in that sort of uh, five-meter channel. They just come around the front almost on a small little wraparound play with uh, Herps and then Big Joe against Potros, there's only one winner there. No, it's a it, really clever play. And, and this thing, Potros and them, they had defending at the front, but that's because Seattle all season long have gone for back corner mall. Yeah, so I, I, called, I thought it was going to be mall. Always, oh, yeah, yeah. Going, yeah, always yeah. going around the back. That It's been very hard to stop. They get that sort of shift, uh, shit, like double stack, or whatever you call with the extra number. They get that back corner. They've been almost impossible to stop. So that's where uh, Free Jacks are thinking about they then come more to the front of the line out, but they still sometimes still go inside on that mall. What they did really cleverly was instead of dropping it to maybe like a peel guy around, Herbs is actually supposed to be hitting yeah, but he just the ball stays out. and he just stays out and gets yeah. it as a carrier. And then he's got Joe alive there and you've got two physical players winning that mismatch. It was just clever. And we, we talked about variation could decide this thing and both teams brought clever variation for the final I, I, I thought it was bravo from both teams on both those tries it was and then in the second half you've already talked about it we probably don't need to say too much more but it was really down to the free jacks defense and then red zone just yeah. efficiency coming away with points i mean the amount of times when the other the, i should also say as well that yellow card yeah. wasn't well timed lapetti obviously going high tackle try potentially in the corner the tmo comes back but that kind of killed it a bit yeah. around that 60 minute mark or sorry 50 to 60 minute mark but it was the free jacks defense that just held on and anytime seattle looked like they were in the 22 it just got turned over yeah man. breakdown mate they were all they're alive and this is the thing when a team gets over the gain line it's a lot harder to niggle them at the breakdown yeah but because the free jacks kept repeat effort line speed go again in your face never really let seattle get rolling on the front foot except for maybe like pulu had a moment yeah, yeah there's a couple moments, of moments but then they got it back but even when they got to the 22 like cameron Orr and the other two games has got them on the front foot yeah. to, to create tries boom iced on the game line do you know what i mean yes that then allowed them to when they finally got that moment of separation from ball carrier to clearers they were all over the jackal because they got men on their feet they're not getting purchased they're allowed to reset they're slowing it down the minute there's isolation they're well drilled you got jackal threats across that one through 15 or anyone they put in their 15 and there for the free jacks and it's just a clever savvy way and it just slowly 
thousand paper cutted the Seattle yeah. Seawolves out of the game. They just couldn't convert. Like, and they were just put under pressure. It started off early in the game in the middle of the field with some of those defensive sets forcing them to kick. And then it really defined itself in that last 20 minutes, the amount of red zone entries they repelled. Like yeah. breakdown turnover, stop the malls. Like Seattle had a bunch of mall shots in there. There's not many teams that stop Seattle Mall this year, trust me. Like they it's a yeah, they didn't underrated get anywhere, really, weapon of it. them. No. An underrated weapon of them. And the Free Jacks had conceded a few. They conceded against Chicago, shutting that down. Absolute game changer in the game. Back to back. That's what they did. Of course, they did it. And I gotta say, as you've just said as well, the better team won on the day. I mean, that's our review. Is there anything much else to say about that? Yeah, just quickly, that the better team won on the day, and I think probably the team that won deserved it because that Free Jacks team isn't the same team from last year. No. They came in, loads of change. Injuries they as well. They weren't though. ever really at their like same dominant force of last year. But by God, by the time they got to the end of the yeah, season, yeah. they had bootstrapped their way to such a good team. Like the team that I played early in the season or you saw earlier Free Jacks to what you were seeing at the end, that's good coaching. That's yeah, good environment. Good, good that, that, on that, uh, hats goes off to them. They deserve it. To go back to back in a league this competitive is, is impressive. And, you know, fair play to them. They know how to win big games. No, it was. Congratulations. New England Free Jacks on your second Major League Rugby title. Now, Corbs, this we're going to go into part of the show, which... I am waiting for the abuse that might come our way. <laughs> we have decided that as it's the end of the Major League Rugby season, and of course it's our last episode mm -hmm. of the series, we're going to give it a go and talk about a team of the season. How does that sound? Sounds great, mate. <laughs> Sounds great. I get enough heat doing my own team selections. I bet I you deal do. With all this. Corbs is going to take care of the forwards. I'm going to take care of the backs. This is the Rugby Rundown Major League Rugby team of the season. Okay, mate, we have done it. We've gone through that review. Um, and now it's time to really put us under a bit of pressure here. And obviously, as two former players, someone who's very much still part of the league as well as a coach, we like to think we know our stuff. <laughs> We're not based this, by the way, on any stats. No. No, we are purely basing this on performance that we have seen throughout the whole of this season. And we are picking the best players that we believe in terms of their performances overall. Is that fair? Have I got that right? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. So, before anyone comes us a heat about the fact that he's got more <laughs> meters than him, just bear that in mind, all right? So, here we go, Corbs. I'm going to hand it over to you. What is your front row of okay. our team? Let's go. All right. Front row at loose head. Drum roll, please. <laughs> very, very tough competitive space. I've gone with Cameron Orr oh. from Seattle Seawolves. Mr. Consistent. Played an incredible amount of games this season. A long minutes in most of those games as well. And probably just had the best package for me of around the park, set piece, um, and then just experience in this league as well. Went a long way. Hooker. Here we go. Not number two. to look to his compatriot, Joe Talfatehe. Um, again, Agreed. this was a stacked a stacked sort of card. Um, but I think Joe, just body of work, being the talisman for one of the more successful teams, um, he went big minutes. He had some injury wobbles in the middle, but he fronted up. Most people don't know, but Joe pushed through those last games needing surgery from yeah. pretty much all of the playoffs. Still scored about eight tries, yeah, nine I know. tries And so season. for me, he's clearly, clearly the number two. And then for tight head for me Number i've gone maybe three. a little bit different but uh, and excuse my enunciation but yep. it, i've gone with joe apakatoa from yep. anthem uh for me obviously maybe under the radar for a lot of people but when this guy came in at, before he come in anthem probably had one of the weakest scrums in the in the league he came in i felt anthem had one of the top four best scrums in the league and we're actually going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best packs and he's a game changer Big, tall, athletic, dynamic, great scrum, good over the ball, bangs in D. What more do you need in that front row? Honorable mentions at loose head, Jack Ascaro, just yep. missing out for me. Um, I just think Cameron's all maybe body of the whole season was slightly higher, but once Ascaro and Longwell teamed up, very sweet. His stock shot yeah. way up for me. Um, and, and then I'll probably sit in somewhere around like Ezekiel Lindemuth or someone like that. I thought was another strong player, another great signing guy who is yeah. just a heartbeat of a successful Houston team. A lot of involvements, good set piece, good around the park. I just thought maybe all was a little bit more complete for me. That That's why I went for those. At Hooker, 
again, you know, Coates at, yeah, at Dallas Coates was, was, was hard yep. to, to ignore with the amount of tries. But I just felt like Joe, if I was picking my team, I would pick Quatrin. Joe. And then Andrew Quatrin was yeah. the other one for me. Um, Sue as well um, at Houston's probably in the and mix. And there's probably a few other floaters around the league as well. But but on a whole, um, Joe still locks it down for me. And then tight head, probably Sammy Matinga. Yeah, he, he was he was quality for the Seawolves. Yeah, yeah Longwell's also. probably in the yeah. next. When he, base, when he arrived. Yeah, when, when he arrived. When he got here. Yeah. Um, and then there's probably one or two others that I'm forgetting about. Well, well let's get on to the second rows as well, because this is a big engine room area, Corbs. Go on, hit me. What are your number four and number five? All right, in the second rows, again, very crowded category, lots to pick through. I've gone with sort of my, my line-out leader, my, my sort of line out noise is James Scott. Yeah. I think Chicago, best line out team like in the comp choice. this year, statistically. He played nearly every game, absolute heartbeat, minutes. Um, I thought he he he's my loose head lock. And then at tight head lock, this guy kind of bounced around six lock, wherever, but I picked Sam Gola from Dallas. It, it was crowded. There's a few other maybe out and out locks, but that guy, it, to me, is one of the most highest rated talents for me in this competition, being a domestic, what he did at Dallas, a bit unlucky with his ankle injury, but his body of work, again, speaks for himself. A lot. Like, so dynamic in the loose, good at set piece, hardworking, a leader on his team. What more do you want? Quick honorable mentions, if you can, in there, just quick okay, ones. Okay, a few ones. Johan Momsen was in the mix for me. George Merrick uh, was in the mix for me. Greg oh, Peterson oh, there it was is. in the mix the as well. Like, oh, I was going to be moving by one Legion pick, but, uh, you know, there's no bias here no, on, on the rundown. No, yeah, yeah, we... Don't let the shirt fool you. Yeah, I know. You're wearing it on the last episode. <laughs> yeah, so that's I'd understandable. For the, for um, the finale. No. Um, and, yeah, probably a few others that I'm, like, not thinking of right now, but, yeah. Let's go with the back row because this is hugely competitive. And we sat down, I should say, earlier, and we, we must have spent about 45 yeah. minutes debating just the back row. Hit me, you're six, seven, eight. So my six, this is the one that I don't Shoo debate in. at all. No, uh, we did not debate this one. For me, um, the number six is Geronimo Gomez Vara, the Dallas Jackals. I just think as close to a one-man band, considering Dallas he are a really insane. good team. Like, where have he played, year, though? Where yeah, have he played? played? Second row, he's played eight. He almost made it in the lock position as well, but we, we definitely needed a, a position for him. At seven, I've gone with Dylan Nell from Utah Warriors. I just think, obviously, he had a ban at, at, at part of the season, but out and out, seven, breakdown menace threat. Um, probably other than maybe the Free Jacks guy who came in right at the end of the season, I thought... Uh, Dylan now is by far like the out and out breakdown seven of the competition for me. Number eight is this is the one where we with the, it's between two. I mean, they could even yeah. say between others. This but one we say up. the two, and then actually, I'm just gonna it's ask you. I don't think you've actually decided yet. Say the two, but who are you gonna go for? Okay, so my two bracketed for number eight were well, obviously Kunatani from LA. Yeah, just uh, dynamic X factor, just. You know, mo I think most offloads, one of the most breaks. Oh, like he was just most defenders beating him in the just, league or something like just that. Just a dynamic. Not that we're going on stats, but no. he's just a dynamic. Um, you know, bulldozer in this league and so long and rangy and actually a line out option as well and good at the breakdown, a lot of things. And then the other is Sam Tuafua from Dallas Jackals. And to me, I think Tuafua is probably the best eight in the league. The argument is Kunatani here all season. To a Fua later in the season. Who are you going for? Come on. Oh, I'm going to go Kinnaton. Oh, I, I, you know what? I agree with you. He was X. Just because it was just the body of work in the season, yeah, and Tua only missed out by length of season, but probably the best eight in the comp this year. Well done, Corbs. That is our, that <laughs> is our, there. that is our forward pack. We now come on to the backs and. There was some electricity. There was some unbelievable game players, some hard workers, you name it, across the board. This one was very hard. I'm going to start at nine, and I'm going to go with a Houston Sabre cap. I'm going to go with Andre Warner. Not stats, eight tries to his name, but what I would say is that on the whole, Houston, minus their last part of the season in the playoffs, he must have played in pretty much every minute. He controlled things brilliantly. He was the link between ultimately having the forwards go well and then equally, Sabercats actually pulled things out the back this year. They looked to have a little bit of a different dimension. I think he was brilliant. He's kicking game as well. Feisty character. Honorable shout outs, I must say, to Juan Di Oliver. Yeah, I was going to say, he, no, I, he, I, he's my guy, he, that guy. He year. honestly would be in there for sure. I am going a little bit on the fact that Andre Warner did play 
basically every game. Yeah. Um, another shout out, of course, JP Smith. I thought he's always been brilliant for the Seawolves. Number 10. Enjoy thinking about this position. I've gone for Mr. Jason Potros. It was a bit of a toss up between him and Mac Mason. I do think whoever won the final would have maybe been swayed. Yes. Um, but also, I do want to shout out Jason Robertson at DC. But I do think Potros, it wasn't, I think he was better last year overall. But he was one of the reasons where you talked about some sticky areas for Free Jacks during the year. I actually thought he was one of the big reasons they lifted it. Yep. He controlled things brilliantly. His kicking game's outstanding. He's a massive threat. He scores tries. And I've got to say, he was a big part, a leader, captain of that Free Jacks team. If I go on to then, uh, I'm going to go on to, who have we got? Number 11. I'm going to go to the winger. I'm going to go with Michael Manson. I'm actually going to say you chose this one before yeah. I did. And I agree with you always. Corbs, you literally said to me, it's like, when you played Utah, you couldn't believe how fast he was. Yeah, I just, both times, home and away, I was blown away by how electric that guy was. He I'd seen him in highlights and, up. in preview, but for me, probably the out and out most X factor in the in the comp this year, which is saying something yes. with some of the players that, that were in this oh, in this competition. Unbelievable players. If I look in terms of going staying with the wingers, I will then jump to number 14 and I'm going to go with Jay Stigling. I also think he was brilliant. Meters gained and also just the tries. I know it's not stats, but he was a big, big yeah. threat for the Seawolves throughout the year. Um, whether they sometimes used him on the wing, they sometimes brought him into the centers on a, a few occasions, but regardless, he really was a try scoring machine. Honorable mentions, Tony Pulo as well, the Seawolves, gotta say that. Philomoni, uh, Philomoni at a uh, new uh, Nola Gold, I should say. He was superb. But those are my wingers. I'm gonna go with 11 Manson and then 14 Jay Stigling. In the middle, this was tricky. I know he played a lot of 13, but I'm gonna move him to 12 to open up the 13 spot. I've gone for Wayne Vanderbank. I mean, he was Supporters Player of the Year, Players Player of the Year, and Player of the Year at the Free Jacks. The guy was insane. Like, literally, no one could tackle him. He was unreal. Man. He was unreal. Like, genuinely, I don't know, like, what is a snake? He just slithers things out. Um, look, he was so superb. I've got to put him in there. He's probably almost MVP of the whole year. And then my other center, of course, I've cheated. I've cheated because I've decided to put a fullback at center, but he did play a lot of center at 13, and it's Devan Rousseau. Rousseau was quality wherever he played, but his ability with his left foot as well, um, big, big um, peg on him. And then also defenders beaten, tries, you name it, just a complete package. And I actually enjoyed watching him in that 13 channel with his outside break. So if you put Vanderbank and him together, plus he's a bit of a ball player, I just think the whole complete package. Um, I'm then going to move straight to my fullback, keep it quick. Uh, yeah, why am I even thinking about this? Reese McDonald. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reese McDonald, uh, he had some time out with injury, but at the same time, when he was playing, he was a key difference yeah. in the Free Jacks. So there you go. I'm going with Reese McDonald. If you kick to him badly, then oh, your own peril. He game is over. game over. So there's our team. Quickly run through the surnames of that forward pack, then, Corbs. Go for me. Okay, Cameron Orr. Joe Talfatehe, Joe Akapatoa, James Scott, Sam Gola, Geronimo Gomez Vara, Dylan Nell, Semi Kunatani. Right. <laughs> Got there. You okay. had to rethink. The blank at the end, but we're going to be changed the eight late. And, and then in the backs, we got Andre Warner, Jason Potros, Michael Manson, Wayne Vanderbank, Devan Rousseau, Jay Stigling, and Reese McDonald. Congratulations. I'm sure they're going to sleep very well tonight, knowing that we have picked them. That is our team of the season, Corbs. It's for us to round up a little bit of rundown news before we have some tears and we end the show. But tears or a beers, mate. Get it right. Cheers, though. Good, brother. <laughs> Yes, we wanted to flip it a little bit and end with a little bit of rundown news because obviously the end of Major League Rugby 2024, we have seen some coaches move on or been replaced. And actually, since our last episode, there's been a couple of bits of news. One that's close to your heart and also close to mine. And then another one at Nola Gold. Let's start with Danny Lee, whose contract was not renewed. Um... I'll hand it over to you, man. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a tough one seeing anyone go. Of course, you're you're close to Danny, and um, he, he no longer will be around. Yeah, it's uh, obviously unexpected, but also the reality of professional sports is you know it's performance driven. 
three year contract came up and and we as a team hadn't performed to the liking of the owners and and they wanted to see change uh heartbroken for danny first and foremost like he pours his heart and soul oh, he, he into works this. unbelievably like, hard. he he cares he gives it he goes above and beyond i'm talking about the guys packing the kit van driving the kit van like any of the <laughs> odd little jobs that you would never expect your head coach to do danny lee is picking the slack up because he's a team player um and obviously we had a really successful year last year this year not quite the same so, and and unfortunately in this scenario uh all i can say is it was an absolute honor to work with him um he's a good mate of mine um i hope someone else who's watching this thinks of him to hire him for a job upcoming uh we're gonna miss him here wish him all the best um and and that's just the reality of the situation it's a tough one yeah, and then Corey Brown at Nola Gold. Um, Nola had an unbelievable season. Really disappointed. I'm sure they'll be with their playoff performance. Um, but he, uh, as I say, parting ways with each other. I know that obviously, I believe there's rumor, or I think it might even be announced of him going to the Highlanders. So that's fair enough. You've got that to say page. that. Yep. The fact that he's picking up that deal. Shame for the goal because he felt like he was building something there yeah. overall. Um, but in the end... That is another one. Do you reckon, Corbs, we might see a potential one or two others be announced here and there? Either new coming in and, of course, maybe even some changes. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, you never know in the MLR. Say never, say never, never in this league. Say never. Uh, and, yeah, 12 ownership groups all with high expectations, all committing Everyone a lot to, to these organisations, want a lot to win, high-pressure environments. Uh, yeah, I can believe it. Oh, I don't know. We shall Hope see. not, but that's just reality. <laughs> Keep your eyes on what happens in the off-season. As for uh, another bit of news, coming up on the Rugby Networks, the big USA Club 7s coming up from Wisconsin Rugby Complex. Um, make sure you go and watch that streamed all weekend long on uh, TRN. Let's That's going to be cool. You've, of course, got someone like Old Blue, Chicago Lions. Yeah, the real uh, creme to the creme of, uh, of the club game, both men and women's. So keep an eye on that. That'll be fun on TRN. Cool. It's good stuff. I've uh, been to two of those and commentated oh, yeah. one of them. There they're, you they're go. Uh... Commentated on sevens, big yeah. man. Love that for you. Yeah, I've done more, uh, quite a bit of sevens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how. Oh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's actually a cracking event. Um, you yes. get to see talent from all over. Like when I commentated that event, Sam Sullivan was just playing club oh, sevens wait, now an Olympic, Olympic bronze medalist. Medal. Like... Keep an eye on there because you'll see some stars of the future for sure, especially galvanized by yes, our, our deadlifts, our women. We might as well get them in one oh, more time. And can not? we just say, Alona Mars, inst this has got to be its own new segment. It's probably, it's probably Alona Mars now. Instagram segment is probably on the way to 3 million. But it, I, no, it's over. It's, it's over. over. It's over yeah, yeah, last I looked, she'd already, she was at 2.8 and she surpassed the All Blacks. Oh my goodness <laughs> I think she surpassed the she All Blacks the most and World followed, Rugby or something. She's the most followed person within rugby and no matter organisation. Go on, Lowe. Well done to yeah, you. Yeah, good on you. Friend of the show. Changing the game. That. Changing the game, indeed. Um, of course, the other things to bear in mind coming up is the PNC for the US uh, A Eagles. Um, and the other thing, just to say on the Rugby Network, next month will be the start again of Premiership Rugby. It's back already. Can't believe it. It will be back. I know. <laughs> it's just like, where's that time gone? Pre-season. The lads already been in for a while in pre-season. Uh, we obviously had one player, Luke Green, who's gone from Legion to Northampton Saints. Yep. And... He had a week off and then just straight, straight back in because otherwise you miss too much because they've been back a while now. Flipping heck. Flipping it's amazing heck. for the internationals. That's the one I think. Like, when do they get a break? I don't know. Silly. Hey, look at us. We've now retired. We've got breaks. Maybe. Yeah, I live for the breaks. <laughs> live for the breaks. All right, then. That is the Rugby Rundown news. Let's enter the final whistle. Right, that's it. We've got through it. A little bit worse for wear myself after a big weekend, <laughs> as Corbs has laughed at me throughout this episode. I don't know if it's made the edit or not. Um, but that is wrapping up Series 1. There's so many people to thank. I do want to start by particularly a special mention to our editor. Adam, uh, absolutely MVP. MVP. He's been an absolute joy to work with. Been very close to him throughout this uh, throughout this whole uh, project and look forward to hopefully continuing with him into Series 2. Shout out to Josh as well at the Rugby Network, um, who's been fantastic as well, just helping us behind the scenes. And then to Major League Rugby and everyone involved with uh, the Rugby Network who's helped us out. Thank you so much. Corbs, though, really, I want to thank you. Because without you, I wouldn't have been able to do this. Because uh, Same, mate. Yeah. Uh, same. I want to thank you too. Uh, 
you put a lot of hard work into this show, Thank especially you. with, you know, me coaching and stuff this season. You really took the reins of of, of sort of running the whole show, and I, I think it's amazing. And then I think probably. The last person I want to thank are the fans. There we go. Like, that is the last the, thanks. The they, major fans. The ones who've been here from day one to the ones this is your day one. We appreciate you. Uh, this is the start of something hopefully very special. This is an area that needs to develop with rugby as landscapes growing. We, we, yes, we're we're putting a lot of our heart and soul into it, trying to make this as good and as entertaining and as legitimate a rugby show as possible, which I think we've done. We've just got to keep going our exposure and, and our reach. So for our loyal fans, thank you. To our new fans, thank you. And to anyone else that you can bring into this realm to help support us along our way, we appreciate it and thank you to you too. Yeah, you said it all there, Corbs. We will see you soon enough, but we're going to take a break from us all here at the Rugby Rundown. Until next time, Series 1 over. Let's see you in Series 2. It's goodbye. Cheers, Walt. Cheers.